Imagine making over $400,000 a year and you don't even have to get out of your bed. But then one day you decide to give it up, to give it all away. Why in the world would anybody do that? I don't know. But that's exactly what I did. I poured my entire career, over 16 years, into building this business that was making me well over $400,000 per year. This was a business where I was the boss. I didn't have to commute to. I had a dedicated team that was taking care of 95% of the day-to-day -day operations. It was literally a dream come true. This is the best dream ever. So many people chase passive income and the way that I had my business, which was my financial planning practice, the way that I had this thing structured, I mean, it was the closest thing to passive income, making over $400,000 per year of reoccurring revenue. So why in the world would I give this thing up? Tell me more. So was I crazy for giving this thing up? Well, that is debatable. But what I wanna to share today is what was my reasoning? What was my rationale for giving up truly a passive income source? I wanna share with you what were my thoughts? What was the thought process so that you could understand the why and also why it could help you make a very hard decision about something that's important to you that you may want to give up, but you might be too scared to do so. So we're gonna break all that down and more in this video, so let's get started. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel, Wealth Hacker Labs. I'm your grateful host, Jeff Rose. So breaking this down, why I walked away from a $400,000 business, reoccurring revenue, literally did not have to do a whole lot of work. I mean, it was by far one of the well, one of the best well-oiled machines that existed. And yet I walked away. Don't just walk away. Before I go into breaking down these different reasons why I walked away, let me first say this, like this was not an easy decision. Like this was very hard for me. And not just from the monetary aspect. This was my career. Like this was something that I had spent over 16 years growing. My financial planning practice was my baby. It was my first baby. I started this before I had my first son. So for me to walk away, to give it away, I mean, this was incredibly difficult. It was a ton of prayer asking God to let me know, show me, like, is this the right decision? Please help show me the way. The other thing was like, I, I tried to do a partial sale. This was a couple of years ago before I even made the move to the Nashville area. Then I tried to do a full sale to my former partner and he declined it initially. So I, it was like, there were two different situations where like I was trying to sell part of it and then all of it, that those didn't work out. So I kept just running into this, this wall. Like, man, is this really the right thing? Is this the best move? To where finally it got to the point that I recognized like, yes, this is what I need to do. Even though I knew it, it still wasn't easy. So what was my final reasoning? What was my final rationale of getting rid of this business? Well, just sharing what was going on with my life and also my other businesses, you know, let's break this down. You know, the first reason why I sold or gave up a $400,000 passive income business was it was a distraction, which is so weird to say, to say that making $400,000 a year passively was a distraction. Go get distracted. When we think about distractions, like I, I'm not talking about like a distraction where you're sitting in a movie theater and somebody is talking, or if you have somebody that when they're slurping a soda, like that's really distracting. So you have to realize while I am quote unquote running this business, even though I'm running it remote, you know, my financial planning practice was three and a half hours away. I still had my online business. That was thriving. And my online business, you know, that was my, my blog, Good Financial Sense. Good, uh, we also had the YouTube channel. I also had brand deals that I was doing, like sponsorship type deals. 
So I had a mastermind group that people were paying to be a part of. I mean, I had a lot of other things going on that the brick and mortar business that I spent 16 plus years growing was a distraction. And it was distracting me from the things that I really enjoyed doing because this was all the stuff that I absolutely loved. Like this was what I would, I've been referred to as my unique ability. You do have magic. Of course. You know, this is the stuff that I was making a ton of money and just thriving, enjoying every single minute of me doing this. But with the financial planning practice, like it was the distraction. And I can remember clear as day, I was in the middle of recording a video or just doing something with the online business. And I got a call that a client had an issue with a check, meaning that they were trying to have a check deposited into their checking account. And it was like a $500 check. So it wasn't like a huge amount, but and this was an issue that my office manager could have totally handled. My, this, my client did not need me to take care of this, but it was what she was accustomed to. So I had to stop what I was doing and then take care of this client need, which I was still grateful to take care of them. Cause like, I mean, I, I like the client. I, I, I enjoyed working with them, but it totally derailed me. You're getting derailed. Okay. It was, it was a complete interruption to my day. And for those that get being creative and uh, creating something, whether you're working on a project, working on a video, working on a podcast, writing a book, whatever that is, you know, when you get interrupted, it's hard to pick back up where you left off at. Maybe you're wired differently, but like, that's how my brain is wired. And I can just remember going to my wife and saying like, gosh, like this happened. I know it's not a big deal, but it just, it just totally derailed me. And my wife at that time finally said, wow, yeah, I get it. Like it's, it's time. Like it's time to move on, which I was blown away. It's time to move on. Now, the other part worth mentioning that I haven't mentioned yet, but with the online business at the time, the online business was bringing in gross. It was greater than one mil. Uh, that it was bringing on. So not only was the online business, or I'm sorry, was the brick and mortar financial planning practice a distraction, but the truth is, is that this business was making three times more than the brick and mortar business. So it was really, really a distraction because man, this thing is humming. Everything is, is great. Everything is awesome. And I'm having to stop my day to work on a business that is bringing in less. So that was like really the big epiphany of, okay, it it's, it's time. It's time to walk away. It's time to start focusing on the online business. Focus. So that brings us to number two, which is it was time. It was, it was time. It was time to move on. It was time to start focusing, putting more effort on what I was doing up here. The other part about this is that it being time was I enjoyed creating content. I enjoyed writing blog posts. I enjoyed publishing YouTube videos in the podcast. And at the end of the day, putting out information that I knew would help people help hundreds, thousands, maybe millions. I don't know. You know, it's so funny. Like I moved here to the Nashville area where I live super close to Dave Ramsey, his brand new office and you know love him or hate him you know he has impacted millions of people with his radio show and his book and all his different programs and i had similar ambitions of wanting to help as many people as i could and to, to also make really good money take care of my family support my family while i'm helping others like that is such <laughs> And it's such an amazing gift that you can't even really fully comprehend that. Like it's, it's still incomprehensible either way though. Like it was time to start focusing more of my efforts. And I knew that once I totally walked away from the financial planning practice and could focus on the online business and every other, just other aspects. Like I just knew one, I have the potential to make more, but also I'm just going to enjoy it that much more like now did I know this for sure heck no I didn't know this like this was all a pure act of faith hoping 
you know, but based off prior experience, because there have been other risks I've taken in the past, I just knew that it was time. It's time. So that was the second reason. The third reason, and this one was like a hard one to accept, was my clients, they deserved better. They did. They deserved better. And what, I'm, what I mean by that is, obviously, my, my heart wasn't in it anymore. I had an amazing staff. You know, I had a, an amazing office manager. I had a junior advisor that was, you know, taking care of my people, but they deserved better. You know, when I started in the business, I was so, I was so excited to help people. I was so excited about building the financial plans and talking about investment portfolios and rebalancing and reallocating and required minimum distributions and 529 college savings plans. Like I was in it to win it. Like I absolutely loved every aspect of it, but it got to the point where I just didn't have the heart. Listen to your heart. My heart just wasn't in it anymore. And I knew that my clients deserved to work with somebody that was in it, you know, that their heart was in it, that they would get just a better level of service than even me on my best day, you know, my clients weren't getting 100% of me, you know, they were getting 80%, 70%, like just, just depends on whatever was going on with the other, the other my online business was going on with my family, they deserve better. And that was a hard one to accept because I, I, I had so much pride in how much time and effort that I put into each client, just building these relationships and generally caring about who they are and what they're doing and the concerns they have and the fears they have. And like, I just, that was me. Like I would wear, like hold my clients emotions. And whenever we had bad markets and just seeing you know, how that would affect people, like, gosh, I just, that was me. And so I just knew when I didn't have that same passion, I didn't have that same drive, that same desire. Like I knew that I needed to find somebody that was going to take better care of my clients than I had the capacity to. It was a hard one to accept, hard one to admit, but my clients did deserve better. You deserve better. Now the fourth reason why I sold, and this is where I had the the benefit of having some prior experience and understanding how this worked. Otherwise, you know, for, for somebody just to say this, you're like, oh yeah, that, that sounds good. Like that's a good tweetable, that's a good quote. Let me put that on Instagram so I can get some likes on that. But the fourth reason is big risks equal exponential growth. Big risks equal exponential growth. Now, Every time you take a risk, does that necessarily necessarily mean that it's always going to work out? Ah, of course not, of course not. And I had several different instances in my life where taking a risk didn't quite work out the way that I thought or hoped that it would. So did I know that without a doubt that this was going to work? Of course I didn't, of course I didn't, but I had prior experience to show me that in different aspects of my business, when I was willing or able to take a big risk. But when I, when I mean risk, like this is not like a, I'm gonna do this blindfolded and just hope it cross my fingers and hope it works out. You know, these were calculated risks. These were risks that I had mentored. I sought counsel from other people before me so that I had the wisdom, I had experience, I had the knowledge before I did these things. One example was I can remember was, you know, when I left my firm. So I started with a big box wirehouse firm, more of a regional firm. I left after five years and co-founded my own investment planning firm. Like that was a huge risk. It was scary. And I had a lot of people tell me that it was a bad decision. Actually, a former mentor of mine told me that I was making the biggest mistake of my life. A mistake. That was hard to hear. And yet 90 days after making the biggest mistake of my life, I was making three times as much per month in 90 days. And that did not stop. So that was a big risk that had exponential growth. The next one was I founded my own wealth management firm. So basically I left this firm and then founded my own wealth management firm, Alliance Wealth Management which was an RIA, which stands for Registered Investment Advisor. That was another huge risk. 
I didn't know if my clients were going to come. I didn't know what people were going to think. I had no idea. It was also a monetary risk because that took a lot of money to get that thing off the ground. And yet, because I did that, I had, once again, exponential growth. Another one. Moving to Nashville was another huge risk. Scary. I've lived elsewhere. I've lived on the West Coast, lived in LA. What up, In-N-Out Burger? What? My wife, though, has never lived anywhere else. My family had never lived anywhere else. So moving three and a half hours away from everything that we knew as a family to move three and a half hours away from my business, like that was a huge risk that also had exponential growth. So, and I'm actually gonna do another YouTube video on this where I share what I learned by going through this exercise that showed me by taking certain risks and what that led to was basically exponential growth, more than 10X growth. I mean, we're talking like, I don't know exactly how much, not 100X growth, but we're getting there. So that was huge. So knowing that prior, you know, looking back at all, and this is just a handful of things that I know that I did, there's others out there. But I look back at all these different situations in my life where I took a big risk, the payoff was there. As long as it wasn't a risk where like, I didn't talk to anybody and I just didn't like act on impulse, like that's different. Like these were all situations, like we didn't decide to move to Nashville one day and move the next day. Like this was a year process. You know, founding my own investment firm, like that was, gosh, like that was, I think at least a year process. And leaving my first firm, like that was a, I don't remember exactly, but like a six to nine month process. So these were all calculated big risks, but they all led to exponential growth. Okay, and the, the last reason, and this is a multi-part reason, but the last reason is remembering that life is too short. YOLO! YOLO! Life is too short. I love this quote by Paulo Coelho that says, if it's still in your mind, it's worth taking the risk. And that is such insightful, <laughs> such insightful wisdom because when you get an idea, so I am so impulsive, like that is just how I'm wired. Like I get an idea and I wanna do it immediately. And I've learned that I've got to tap on the brakes, hit pause, and just really think through what this looks like. But the things that I just keep thinking about and keep thinking about and keep thinking about, when that is still there, that means like there's something there. Like there's a passion, there's a, 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 there's a desire, and chances are you are willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that whatever that idea is succeeds. So with me selling the business, walking away from this cash cow, it was an idea, it was a thought that would not leave my mind. I knew, I knew that I had to start focusing on the online business first. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. And so after, you know, a year, a couple years of finally distancing myself from the practice, you know, moving three hours away, and then talking to other people that have sold their business, talking to different suitors, like when I'm the first deal fell through, the second deal fell through, I'm like, gosh, I guess I can't find anybody that is willing to buy it that I think is gonna take care of my clients. And then finally finding the perfect buyer. I mean, it was actually right in front of me the entire time. It was right there. And that's when I knew it was time to move on. Now, just a, a couple other tidbits that I, I, I wanna share. I think this is important to, to take note of is that, you know, life is too short. So calculated risk. I mean, here's a, here's a couple of things you need to know is that we had a well-established emergency fund. Uh, like we had over 12 months in cash when this happened. Like, so like we had a nice, cushion. The other thing is that I'm still getting paid. <laughs> That's like kind of the funny thing about this was it was so hard. It was so hard to, to let this thing go. Cause my like, gosh, it's making so much money per month. Like how do I give this up? Like how do I walk away? But it's one of those, you kind of forget that if you sell it. So the way the deal was structured is that I get paid like a monthly check and this monthly check is over a seven year period or longer, 
depending on if we hit whatever the purchase price was, whatever the agreed, uh, agreed upon price. So if it pays off in seven years, great. If what I have received over that seven year period does not match the amount that we agreed upon, then it goes up that much more. And the other reason is that, or the other thing that we had, we had a SOL plan or a CYA plan, like a things go to crap plan. I mean, we had a contingency plan. Like if this doesn't work out, you know, if the online business doesn't work out, if I get hit with another Google algorithm update and the online business vanishes, then, then what? Then what am I gonna do? And I have looked back on my life and looked at all the different situations, all the different obstacles I've had to overcome. And I was pretty confident that either I was, could take a day job being a junior advisor again, I could go into sales, I could figure something out. So with having the contingency plan, you know, still in fact, I'm still getting paid. And also we have plenty of cash on hand. Felt pretty confident that it was okay for me to sell. But I hope that you can see, like this was not an easy decision. A lot of money, it was my baby. It was all that I knew, you know, other than like the online stuff. Like I just had so much of my identity tied up in my business that it was, it was hard to walk away. But I am glad that I did. I haven't lost any sleep over the fact that I sold the business at all. It's been really, really, really good. It's been awesome. I'm glad that I did it. And I hope that what I've shared with you today is helpful. It's helpful for a situation that when you think that you need to walk away from something, but it is hard because there's just so many good things, you know, or there's this, oh gosh, but there's this potential. You know, there is this potential there. Do I really want to give that up? And I would have you look at, you know, what are the things that you need from the thing that you're working on right now versus what are the things that you need from whatever the new idea is, whatever this thing is that you are, that you can't get out of your mind, you know, to find what you need from that for it to be a success. Like that was something I struggled with until I joined a coaching program. I'm going to have more about how to go through that, uh, that thought process and that type of thinking and answering those questions that will help bring some clarity in making some really tough decisions. But when you walk through that and you do that, gosh, you, you walk out of that and you feel so much more confident. All right, y'all, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope walking through my process and this big decision for myself and my family is helpful, to helpful to unpack, you know, some big decision you may have in your life. As always, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.